Hi, welcome to another session. Uh, we're looking at combining powers today. Now, some people also refer to these as valencies, but we're going to think about, I like to think about them in terms of how elements combine to make something new. And they always do things in fixed ratios. We've learned that when a compound forms, X amount of one substance combines with Y amount of another substance and all these are based upon the particular compound we're forming. So, in many ways, we can see the compounds are like cakes. I like comparing this one because it's a very, very tangible object we can think about. If we don't have the correct combination in our cake, it tastes terrible. So we need to make sure that we put things together in the right order. And a compound is very much the same thing. We've got the elements that must be put together in a fixed order and a fixed ratio. Otherwise we get not the compound we're after, but a different one. For example, if I have one carbon combining with one oxygen, we form a compound called carbon monoxide. But if I accidentally put two pieces of oxygen with our carbon, I get carbon dioxide. Now, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are different compounds and they have different properties. And this is really important for us to remember that when we form a compound and we name the compound, then that compound will always have the same formula because it is made by elements put together in fixed ratios. And we should always remember you can't have half an element, so the ratio must always be whole numbers. So how do we work out the combining powers or valencies of the elements? Well, very fortunately, the people who developed the periodic table made it in such a way as we can see columns of elements with the same valencies. So if we go to our first column on the left, column number one, it also has a valency or combining power of one. Alright, so you can see where this is going a little bit. Now column number two, which is things like magnesium and calcium, have a combining power of two. We go across over to the next long column. Notice I'm leaving the little columns in the middle. I'm not touching them at this stage. And column number three, the big column number three, has three. Column number four, which is where carbon is, has four. Column number five actually goes back down. It has a combining power of three. Then we go to column number six, which is oxygen and its friends. It has a combining power of two. Then we go to fluorine, chlorine, and the other halogens, combining power of one. And lucky last is the inert gases. Now, inert gases, as we've learned, don't combine. So therefore, we give them the combining power of zero, or valency of zero. Now, the big problem we've got is this area in the middle. They are our transition metals and they've got a bit of a problem because they can vary a little bit. So we actually find that they have multiple or variable valencies. But as a rule of thumb, we can say they have a valency of two, because all of them do have a two valency or two combining power, but they also have others as well. And this, this is where we have the problem. So to help us out with that, the conventions of naming tell us that we should tell the valency of a transition metal in Roman numerals after the name of the metal. And more of that later. So from this we can see that metals and non-metals have different ones, and we saw that the boundary between metals and non-metals is where the four maximum is, and then it decreases again. So one of the things I'd like you to think about, we've learned about ions before, so we tend to give metals the same combining power of valency as their ion. 
So sodium forms a 1 plus ion. Notice that we also, it belongs in group 1, so it has a combining power of valency of 1 as well. So the easiest way to remember it is in the groups and in the ions, if they give you the ions. Non-metals, we normally give a negative sign to it. Now this is just a little convention that helps us work out formulas, so I'll go through that in a minute. And again, they have a valency or combining power which is the same as their charge on their ion. So oxygen, when it forms the oxide ion, has a net charge of negative 2. So the valency is negative 2, or if you like, the combining power is negative 2. Easy peasy. And I've asked you to learn, or you've been asked by your teacher to learn, some complex ions, some common complex ions, and again, that follows through their combining power of valency will be the same as the charge on the ion. So something like nitrate, which is a 1 minus charge, has a valency of 1 minus. And it's treated like a non-metal. That becomes important. One of the ways we can think about forming compounds is to go through this whole idea of using adding the combining powers together until we get a value of zero. So if we think about sodium fluoride, sodium has a combining power, we see it here, has a combining power of 1, which is the same as the charge on the ion, sodium ion. All right, so we put it in. Fluorine has a combining power of 1. So when I add the two elements together to form sodium fluoride, so I get NaF, if I add the combining powers, I get zero. So that tells me that NaF is the correct formula. That's pretty easy to go through. There are other ways, which we'll go through in another session. So if we are able to do this, what I'd like you to do is now try to do it between sodium and sulphur. Now the product will be sodium sulphide. So I'm going to allow you some time to do that and then we'll go through it in class, I'm sure, at some later stage. They tell me that practice makes perfect, so let's have another go. Now we're looking at aluminium, this one, and we're looking at its combining with oxygen. Now obviously it's not going to be a one-to-one -one because I'm giving you harder tasks as we go through. So let's work through. I'd like you to try to come up with the way, the, the ratio of aluminiums to oxygens in aluminium oxide and then tell me the correct formula. Again, we'll go through this at some later stage, in class probably. And just to make sure we do understand it fully, I've actually changed the second half of the compound, in this case it's aluminium hydroxide. So we're using a complex ion, the hydroxide ion, which has a charge of minus one. There, I've given you its combining power, for those who have forgotten. And I'd like you to come up with the correct formula for aluminium hydroxide as well. Now this is one of the many ways we can use valency to work out formula. And I hope this has been helpful.